A locomotive sits inside a tunnel on Southern Pacific Territory in California. The oil burner is still running on low flame. The cab is filling with carbon monoxide, with heat, with the kind of air that stops your lungs from doing their job. The engineer and fireman are slumped over. They have been like this for hours. Outside the tunnel, railroad officials are trying to figure out how to reach the locomotive without getting themselves incapacitated in the process. Shutting off the oil feed wasn't straightforward from outside the tunnel, and getting close enough to do it safely took time. The locomotive burned for many hours before anyone could get close enough to turn off the oil feed. The crew never made it out. This happened in 1941 on the Southern Pacific Railroad, with a type of locomotive that was meant to reduce this kind of risk, not eliminate it. And yet it happened anyway. Southern Pacific had a problem that most American railroads did not have to deal with on this scale. Their main line from California to Nevada crossed mountain territory, and the route included dozens of tunnels and long stretches of wooden snowsheds built to protect the tracks from avalanches. These snowsheds were essentially tunnels made of timber, and when a steam locomotive entered them, the exhaust had nowhere to go except back down into the cab where the crew was already hot enough to drink gallons of water on a shift and barely notice it because it all felt like it came straight back out as sweat. Tunnels and snowsheds trapped the heat and exhaust and made conditions far worse for crews. In 1909, Baldwin Locomotive Works delivered two massive mallet compound locomotives to Southern Pacific, numbered 4000 and 4001. They were among the most powerful locomotives on the Southern Pacific roster at that time. Southern Pacific was proud of these machines. The crews who had to operate them through the Sierra Tunnels were considerably less enthusiastic. Mallet locomotives brought power, and with that power came new problems. The exhaust temperatures from these locomotives reached hundreds of degrees Fahrenheit. Inside the tunnels and snowsheds, that exhaust had nowhere to dissipate. It bounced off the wooden roofs and came straight back down into the cab, mixing with combustion gases that were toxic in ways that the crews understood viscerally even if they did not have the medical vocabulary to describe it. Carbon monoxide binds to your blood cells somewhere between 200 and 250 times more strongly than oxygen does, which is why even short exposure can quickly turn into headache, confusion, and collapse. The crews on those first two mallets sometimes resisted those assignments. Southern Pacific tried respirators that used compressed air from the locomotive systems, through a purifier and a tube to the engineer's face. According to first-hand accounts, this helped with the breathing but did nothing about the heat, nothing about the deafening noise, nothing about the hot steam venting from the low-pressure cylinders. They even developed full breathing hoods for the Sierra crossings. The problem was not solved. The legend says that an engineer got creative. He had his locomotive turned around on a turntable, connected the pilot end to his train instead of the tender end and ran the entire route backwards, pulling his train behind him with the smoke blowing away from the cab instead of into it. Reports suggest other crews followed. It worked, but running backwards meant the tender blocked your forward view. You were on the wrong side for reading signals, and the tenders were not designed to be pushed at the front of a train, so speed was limited. Southern Pacific needed a permanent solution. They went back to Baldwin and commissioned a locomotive that was essentially built backwards from the start, with the cab and firebox at the front of the machine and the tender remaining at the rear. Oil burning made this possible, because oil could be pumped forward through pipes from the tender to the firebox, which you cannot do with coal. The first 15 of these cab-forward locomotives were delivered in February and March of 1910 and Southern Pacific had ordered them before the prototype even arrived for testing. They placed a large early order before the design had any long service record. Over the next 34 years, Southern Pacific took delivery of hundreds of cab-forward locomotives from Baldwin. The final class, the AC-12, stretched well over 100 feet long and weighed hundreds of thousands of pounds. The exhaust stack was at the back, the cab was at the front, and the crews could finally see where they were going and breathe while they were doing it. The design solved the suffocation problem on open track and in short tunnels, 
but no engineering solution eliminates all risk. With the cab at the front, the crew would be the first to hit any obstruction on the track. There were serious hazards involving cab forward locomotives, including fatal ones. With the firebox positioned ahead of the driving wheels, oil leaks could drip onto the rails and cause the wheels to slip. In certain circumstances, the same tunnels the cab forward was designed to conquer could still trap a crew in an atmosphere they could not survive. That brings us back to 1941 and the incident involving cab forward number 4193. The locomotive stopped inside a tunnel while the oil burner kept running. The emergency brakes applied automatically, and the exhaust quickly filled the confined space. Accounts suggest the crew could not reach the shutoff before being overcome. The locomotive sat there burning on a low flame, while the tunnel filled with exactly the kind of toxic atmosphere the cab forward design was supposed to prevent. There were other victims too, though they were never counted in any official statistics. The platform behind the smoke box on these locomotives was called the monkey deck, and it looked like a reasonable place for someone trying to hitch a free ride on a freight train. Many hobos made that calculation. After the locomotive passed through a tunnel or snow shed, the people riding on that deck often faced scalding steam, choking gases, or both. The monkey deck was not a good place to ride on a cab forward locomotive. The cab forwards ran on Southern Pacific until diesel locomotives made steam obsolete. Their last regular service ended in the mid 1950s, with farewell runs following not long after. Nearly all of the fleet was scrapped within a few years. One survivor remained. Number 4294, the last steam locomotive Southern Pacific ever purchased, was saved through a campaign led by the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society. It sits today in the California State Railroad Museum in Sacramento, the first steam locomotive designated as a National Historic Mechanical Engineering Landmark. Restoring it to operating condition would cost well into the seven figures. The museum has decided this is not going to happen. That locomotive in the tunnel was reported to have burned for many hours. The solution that was supposed to keep crews breathing did not save the men in that cab. Engineering can reduce risk, but it cannot eliminate it. The cab forward was a remarkable machine but it was still a steam locomotive operating in an environment that was fundamentally hostile to the humans who had to run it.